going to talk about the lenses that I use on my 8x10 camera. I have three different lenses and they're all Fujinon W lenses. So the first lens I want to talk about is the standard 300mm lens. This is a Fujinon W, Fujinon W 5.6 to f64 300mm lens. It has an image circle of 420 which is more than adequate to cover 8x10 with and allow some room for movements also. The lens is, is pretty good, it's contrasty, it's sharp all the way out to the edges so I'm happy with it on that account. It's in a Prontor th Professional 3 shutter. Now the shutter itself, um, it doesn't have a manual open and close for the f-stop, which I wish it did, but basically I have to uh, thread in to the side here with a cable release, put it on bulb, and then lock the cable release in place so that I can compose and focus. It's not that big of an issue, it's never been a problem, but it's just a small thing. I wish it had that manual open and close on it for the f-stop. The f-stops themselves, like I said, go from 5.6 to f64, and they're clickable f-stops into in third stop increments, so it's not a continuously variable f-stop there, like on the copal shutters, which I have in my other lenses, um, which I'll go over in a, in a little bit here. The uh, shutter itself goes from bulb to 1 1 25th of a second. Now, 1 1 25th of a second is not that fast of a shutter speed, but to be honest with you, you don't, in large format, especially 8x10, you're not usually working out in shutter speeds that are really much faster than a 30th of a second, to be honest with you, as you stop down to get depth of field and so forth. Um, it's a good overall lens, so I'm happy with it on that account. It's in really nice shape. Um, I can't really complain about it. Uh, so that's my standard 300 millimeter lens there. And I'll go to now the Fujinon W. 250 millimeter lens, which is a 6.7 to f45 lens. I had to actually look at it because I, I haven't actually memorized every single lens f-stop on it. So <clears throat> this is a, like I said, it's a Fujinon W 250mm 6.7 lens. The reason why I picked this lens up is because it has a, a pretty nice image circle on it. The image circle on this, um, I want to say, I have it written down so I'm actually going to look um, the image circle on this was 300, the image circle is 398. To do um, 8 by 10 adequately without having to, you know, fit it in real tight, you need at least about a 320 to 325 millimeter image circle. That varies depending on the person you ask. Um, but, you know, I like to stay around the 325 on the image circle just to make sure that it adequately fits the entirety of the negative. So with a 398 image circle, this really does a good job of allowing, uh, you know, covering the whole negative and allowing a little bit of room for movement. This is in a copal shutter, um, so it has the manual open and close on the aperture, which is nice. And um, this one is a continuously variable f-stop here, so a continuously variable, so I can set that anywhere I want. And um, this one here has T for time and bulb, and then it also goes to a 400th of a second. Um, again, I don't usually use those down at the 400th of a second. This one here is a pretty good lens. Um, nice, there are, all the Fujinon Ws are nice and sharp. The one that I'm going to talk about next has it softens a little bit in the corners, but not really an issue. This one has a little bit of scratching on it, on the actual lens element. But I got a good deal on it, and the scratches don't really show up at all in the shots. I mean, they don't affect it in terms of contrast and so forth. I just have to be careful not to point it into, you know, bright, bright light sources so I can avoid flare. I have multi-coated uh, UV filters on them, just in case. Um, actually, I didn't have one on the 300 millimeter here, which uh, I, I guess I need to pick one up. I don't, know, I don't know why that one is doesn't have a, a UV filter on it, but anyway. So that's a nice, uh, nice lens right there. Uh, good solid lens, does the job well. Again, I picked that one up because of the large image circle. And it's a little wider. It looks probably, I don't know, that's probably the equivalent of about a 40 millimeter lens on 35 millimeter. 
So the next lens that I have is the Fujinon W210 um, 5.6 to f64 lens. This is also is in a copal shutter. This one has an image circle of 352. Now, this one is sort of a little hidden gem, I guess. Um, well, I don't want to call it a gem because it's not a, a, a fabulous lens, but it does the job. What I mean by gem is it's a really good price for a wide-angle lens. I think I picked this one up for about $300. Um, so as, as wide, semi-wide-angle go on 8x10, it's a really good price point for this. It has an image circle, like I said, of 352, which 352 is really not, it's, it's just enough to cover 8x10 with just a tiny bit of ability to do movements. And I have run into problems at times where I'm trying to do front tilts and so forth, and I'm running out of image circle uh, to use, or usable image circle with this lens. So I have to be really careful about watching my corners for vignetting. Um, still an invaluable lens. Uh, I've used it several times on several different shots and you know I couldn't have gotten a shot without it so I really am happy with this and it's really in nice shape. Uh, the, all the elements are clean and everything on it. So it's a really solid lens. It's, a, it's also in a copal shutter and it has you know the, the manual open and close there on the f-stop and then it goes from T to 400 also. And it's in a really nice shape. Um, UV filter again. So I'm a really big fan of the Fujinon W lenses, uh, particularly because they're what I consider to be the, for lack of a better term, the poor man's 8x10 lenses. Um, I'd really like to be able to get Rodenstock lenses or Schneider lenses, but you know, some of the, the you know, I think the, the uh, what is it? Uh, sorry, I'm checking my list again here. Uh, because these, these lenses, there's so many different ones, it's hard to, to remember all of them. The Grandagon N200. The Rodenstock Grandagon N200 6.8 would be a great lens to have. It's got a 495 Im, uh, image circle of 495, which would solve a lot of the problems. But this one, I mean, 495 on 8x10, you can just do movements for, you know, you have tons and tons of room for movements. And that would solve the problem of the, the wide angle with the movements. But... And I don't know how much the Grandagon N costs. I, I can't remember off, off the top of my head. But I do know that the Rodenstock and Schneider lenses that I've checked, they're just a little bit, a little bit too salty and out of my price range, uh, at least right now. I, I'd love to have some of them. Another lens that I'd really like to have is the Schneider 165 Super Angulon or the Nikkor uh, SW150 millimeter. And both of those have image circles around 400, and they're nice wide-angle lenses for 8x10 that I would really, really like to have. But again, these are just a little bit too much out of my price points right now. So, I, so for that reason, that is why I somehow came across... Uh, I didn't really plan having all Fujinon W lenses, but as I got into 8x10, started doing research about the image circles and understanding that um, you know obviously the image circle is very important and that it covers the the format and then understanding that there was actually a, a limited number of lenses for 8x10 um, I started doing research and I came across the Fujinon W's now I wanted to say something about the Fujinon W's before I forget because um, I keep in my mind reminding myself to mention this the Fujinon W's that I'm talking about with the larger image circles um, you have to be careful if you're if you're going to purchase one because the writing on a lot of them needs to be on the inside of the of the filter ring here. So on the inside of the lens, some of them have it on written on the outside of the barrel here, and they need to be inside the diameter of the the lens. This is how you know that it's a Fujinon uh, W that has the bigger image circle on it, um, because you can get a Fujinon W210. Um, there's a different one that was a little bit made a little manufactured a little bit later than this one that actually has the writing on the outer diameter of the barrel and so you need to be careful with that also see the the Fujinon the Fujinon uh, W250 6.7 also needs to have the writing on the inside of the the ring element here now, uh, the Fujinon W300mm, though, this one does have the writing on the outside. 
So long story short here is just basically you have to do your research and make sure that if you want to get these Fujinon W lenses that um, you're positive about the image circles and uh, you're positive about which lens you're purchasing and make sure that you're getting the one that has the, the larger image circle. So these are the 8x10 lenses that I have. Um, I'm in the process of potentially getting a Nikkor SW 120mm lens. The 120, the Nikkor SW 120mm is actually in, in Nikon's uh, data publications. It doesn't have an image circle big enough to fit an 8x10. I think it's an image circle of 312. But sometimes, on well, a lot of times the manufacturers are really conservative on their image circles, um, published data. So, from my research and talking to some other large format photographers online, I found out that that lens does just barely cover 8x10, but you're not going to have any room for movements. So I'm considering buying that. You know, that's going to be quite a lot of wide angle. I think that that's about the equivalent of a... 18 to 20 millimeter lens on 35 millimeters so it's really wide angle and it might take me some getting used to I have a 65 millimeter lens for my 4x5 camera which is about the equivalent of the 120 millimeter lens on 8x10 so I think I'm going to go out with that and and try you know shoot with that a little bit more and see if I really want to get that 120 lens but it's a really uh, good price point on that Nikkor SW 120 millimeter lens also so I probably will end up picking one up. So these are the large format lenses that I have. Um, they're really nice lenses and they produce good quality images. I honestly probably for all three of these paid you know as much if not a little less than I would have for you know a really solid rodent stock lens. Um, <clears throat> so I think you know I really haven't shot with too many um, uh, other manufacturers large format lenses Roden, Stock, Schneider and stuff like I mentioned and they probably are a little bit better in sharpness and contrast overall but I've been happy with the Fujinon W's and I'll continue to use them and I hope you found this video um, informative and that you've watched uh, any of my future videos